I think the first year's marketing budget was two million dollars, so we couldn't obviously apply, you know, any kind of major market mm. spending. We would uh, move along, do a lot of stuff on the promotion front, try and build word of mouth, try and do some crazy contests and things like that that would get us noticed. Um, we didn't. We began to spend major marketing in around 1983, 84, when we began the "I Want My MTV" campaign, because we had reached a dead wall mm -hmm. with the cable community. They refused to add the MTV network. We wanted ten cents for it, mm -hmm. a subscriber a month, and the cable industry then was pretty much decentralized. <coughs> cable operators were largely older white men. Pole climbers, we used to call them. That wasn't always true, but they certainly had nothing in common with what they thought was the unruly rock and roll audience. Mm -hmm. They couldn't really believe people would watch this on television. We had no Nielsen data. Mm -hmm. And we decided our choice was to go over their head with an advertising campaign. You know, we had to somehow, because we weren't being threatened to be closed down by Warner Communications. They had a CEO named Drew Lewis who was the same guy that Reagan had hired who fired all the air traffic controllers. Right. He was sort of a slash and burn, this thing ain't making any money, I don't understand what it is, you better prove your metal quickly. So we hired George Lois, famous advertising guy, and we explained the problem. We basically had to go over the head of the distributors and light up our potential fan base in these cities. And the conventional agency people said, well, you know, you don't want to advertise where you don't have any customers. I said, well, our point is we don't have any customers. So if we could get the people out there to know that MTV was here, to have it validated by big rock stars, Mick Jagger, Pete Townsend, et cetera, and have a advertising agency, we hired this fellow named Dale Pond who worked with George, and let's lay in a lot of advertising over three weeks, bombard the market, huge amount of rating points. And we came up with I Want My MTV. George, <clears throat> 15 years earlier, had come up with I Want My Mapo. Which, if you're a real baby boomer, you remember that. Yeah. Had to torment your mother to buy that in the store. So we'd run these MTV spots. I want my MTV. We put a lot of fun animation. to. I worked on that. That mm -hmm. was a big thing for me for a bunch of years. <clears throat> and we would go into a market, and after three weeks, every cable operator in the market would call up and say, okay, I give up. I'll take it. So we would go market by market by market across the country, and we would roll up a million, a million and a half new subscribers a month. He was the first guy who agreed to do it, yes. Um, oh, wow. Les Garland, who was the head of uh, programming at the time, he went over to Paris and hung out and finally convinced Mick to do it. And we taped him very simply. I mean, it was not any kind of great. It was like, okay, it took like you know, three minutes. And once we had Mick Jagger, which you find out in this world, once you have an iconic artist agreeing to do something, you know, the house of cards falls and you get anybody. They would call, he says, call your my, cable say, company and, and say, I want, say, I want my, MTV. my TV. And the phone lines would light up, and they'd never seen anything like that. I mean, it didn't take them long to say, let's add this thing. I mean, obviously, there's a demand for it. Maybe we get some new people to sign up for cable because of it. And, you know, people are going to torment us if we don't have it. We're not like a state-of-the-art cable carrier. There's this new channel out there. We were helped at the same time because CNN and ESPN and a lot of these channels, we were all kind of making our way at the same time. So our competitors were sort of our friends in a way, because we were all building this right. new category of cable programming. But yeah, that campaign saved us from extinction.